Hello, welcome to part two of the lesson on charge and current. I hope you've seen part one and understood it. In part two, we're going to look at some of the more quantitative aspects of charge and current. Let's start with the basic equation we introduced in part one. Current is charge divided by time. So if 10 coulombs flows in two seconds, the current is 5, 10 divided by 2 coulombs per second. And we normally write that with the unit AMP, capital A. In symbolic form, we can write the relationship as I, current, equals Q, charge, over T, time. You'll also see this notation used sometimes. I is delta Q over delta T. The triangle is actually a capital Greek letter delta and it means a change or difference this means the change or difference in charge this means the change or difference in time both formula are equivalent to one another if you're familiar with calculus you'll recognize that I is dq over dt but if you're not familiar with calculus don't worry about that if you use these formula got to get the units correct. I must be in amps, Q must be in coulombs, T must be in seconds. Some students have a bit of a struggle at first arranging equations, rearranging equations. Let me just go through a couple of examples. If I is Q over T, how can I make Q the subject? Well, to get rid of the T under the Q, I've got to multiply by t. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by t. Multiply the left side by t, and we get i times t. Multiply the right side by t, we get q over t times t. The t's cancel, leaving q by itself equals i times t. q is i t. Can I get char uh, an expression for time by itself? Yes. Start with q equals it. If I divide both sides of the equation by i, I'll be left, left with something with t by itself. So let's divide the left side by i to give q over i, and the right side by i, it over i. The i's cancel, leaving t equals q over i. You need to be able to rearrange simple equations and more complicated ones confidently. So make sure you understand what I've just done. If you don't have a steady current, current can rise and fall, battery can gradually become flat. If you want to work out the average current, one way of doing it is to divide the total amount of charge that's flowed by the time. So for average current, use total charge divided by time. Let's do a calculation. If you want to pause here and go and get pen, paper, calculator, probably a good idea. So pause if you need to. Let me go over the question. We've got a charge of 20.0 uh, nanocoulombs and it flows through a diode. You don't need to know what one is, but it's a component electronics component. It takes 15 milliseconds, 15.0 milliseconds to flow through. What is the current? Read the question, pause the video, have a go. Here's my answer. Notice the way I've laid out the answer so it's easy to follow. If you're doing this for exam purposes, remember answers should be, written answers should be easy to follow. So, I want to work out the current. Let me use this format. I could have used Q over T, but I've used delta Q over delta T because it looks a little bit more professional. Put numbers in. Delta Q, Q, it's the charge. It's 20.0 times when, well, nano is 10 to the minus 9. So I simply write 20.0 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs. Divide that by the time, 15.0 milliseconds milli means 10 to the minus 3, a thousandth. So that's the sum we have to do. 
give the answer to three significant figures because the data you're provided with 20.0, 15.0 are given to three significant figures. The answer is 1.33 times 10 to the minus 6 amps. Don't forget the unit. If you want a slightly neater form, note that 10 to the minus 6 is the same as micro. I could say the current is 1.33 microamps. Try a different one. In an X-ray tube, which produces X-rays, a beam of electrons is fired through a vacuum and hits a tungsten target. And when the electrons slow down, they produce X-rays. In this example, we've got a current of 50.0 milliamps flowing through an X-ray tube. And the question is, how many electrons are actually hitting the target each minute? And as a reminder, the elementary charge is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So if you want to pause the video, read the question, have a go for yourself. OK, here's my solution. I is Q over T, we know. You could rearrange that. Q equals I T, T is Q over I. We've got to pick one of these which is most convenient. And I'm going to use the middle one, Q equals IT. Do I know what charge is? Well, if we call the number of electrons hitting the target each minute N, don't know what N is, but let's call it N, that's the answer we're trying to find, the number of electrons per minute, then we can say, well, the charge hitting the target each minute is N times the elementary charge. 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Um, we know electrons are negative. I've left out the negative sign for tidiness. If I wanted to be absolutely rigorous, I would put a minus sign there, and I would have to make the current minus 50 milliamps to be consistent. However, let's plow on the number of electrons times the charge on each one is the total charge, Q. The current I is 50 milliamps, 50 times 10 to the minus 3, and the time is 1 minute, 60 seconds. Rearrange that equation and you'll get a value for N. Hope you follow that. You can always pause the video and read that very carefully if you found it difficult to follow. Let's look at graphs now. Let's talk about graphs of charge against time. Here's a simple one showing charge flowing and gradually after a certain time a certain amount of charge has passed a particular point. In fact, after 4 microseconds, 20 millicoulombs has flowed. How can I work out the current from this graph? Well, the current is charge over time. I could simply divide 20 millicoulombs, the charge, by 4 microseconds, the time. But look, if I divide 20, which is this distance here, 20 millicoulombs, by 4 microseconds, which is this distance here, that is the gradient of the graph. It's what we call the rise over the run. It's gradient. So if you've got a graph of charge against time, the gradient of the graph, how steep it is, is the current. Let's actually work it out. The gradient in this case, the rise is 20 millicoulombs, so write 20 times 10 to the minus 3, and the run, this distance here, is 4 microseconds, 4 times 10 to the minus 6 seconds. Do the sums, the answer is 5,000, and it's got a unit, it's amps, I've divided coulombs by seconds. The gradient is 5,000 amps, and that gives us the current. The gradient of the charge time graph is the current. It will work even if the graph isn't a straight line. Here's a nice curve graph, could be charge entering a capacitor and then leaving a capacitor, charge going up and down in a smooth curve. If I want the current at a particular point on the graph, for example the point I'm pointing to now, we draw the tangent at that point, and the tangent, this line here, is a straight line just touching the curve at the point we're interested in. Once we've got the tangent, to get the 
the current, we work out the gradient of the tangent, delta Q over delta T. So we draw a tangent in a nice big triangle. And that makes it easy to work out the gradient of the tangent, which gives us the current at this point. A moment later, the current will be different. So we refer to this current at a particular time as the instantaneous current. And the instantaneous current gradually changes. At the top of the curve, it's flat. A tangent would be the horizontal line, zero gradient. So at the top, the current is zero. We can use a different type of graph to help us as well. Here's a graph of current against time. In the first two seconds, nothing happens, and the current goes up to 5 amps, stays 5 amps, and then drops back to zero. So we've got 5 amp current for two seconds. What's charge? Well, easy. Charge, Q, equals IT. It's 5 times 2, it's 10 coulombs. Look at the area of this rectangle we've drawn. How do you work out the area? It's height times base. It's 5 times 2. It's 10 coulombs. It's the same as the value of charge we've just calculated. So if you've got a current time graph, the area underneath is the charge. And it'll work even if you've got a more complicated graph. Here's a curve showing current going up to maximum, decreasing back to zero. If you want the total amount of charge that's flowed, it's represented by the area under the graph. And if you can work that out, you've worked out the charge. On a practical note, if this was on graph paper, you could count squares to work out the area. Or you could draw a triangle, which was a similar area to the curve shape, and then work out the area of the triangle using half base times height. Here's one for you to try. So if you want to pause the video, this graph of current versus time, can you tell me how much charge has flowed? Pause the video, have a go. And here's the answer. The charge is represented by the area under the current time graph. So if I work out this area, I've got the charge. Area, half base times height, half. The base is 6 picoseconds, 6 times 10 to the minus 12. The height is 5 kiloamps, 5,000. And that gives us a charge of 1.5 times 10 to the minus 8 coulombs. OK, hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.